Good evening. And right before we dive into the main story, I'll quickly mention that after a full year of investigations, just two days ago, we finally published a full-length report detailing how the UN's Agenda 2030 gets trickled down and implemented in governments across the entire world, handcuffs local farmers, puts them out of business, expropriates their land, while at the same time promoting the edible insect industry to make up for the loss in protein. It's an awesome documentary called No Farmers, No Food, Will You Eat the Buck? And if you'd like to check it out, if you'd like to watch the film for yourself, the link to it will be right there at the very top of the description box below. I hope you watch it, and also hope that you share it with anyone who you think needs to know about what's really happening behind the scenes in this world. Again, the link is right there at the top of the description box below. Now, getting into today's main topic, the CDC has just issued a serious warning to tens of millions of Americans. You see, you might remember how at the height of the pandemic, when you still had the lockdowns and when the mainstream media was pushing fear-based messaging around the clock, well, there was a shocking data point that was released. In 2021, the CDC came out with a study showing that 78% of the people who were hospitalized for COVID were either overweight or they were obese. 78%. But what was perhaps even more shocking than this data point itself was how quickly it got buried. Because from the beginning part of 2021, when this finding was first released, up through today, well, the messaging that's been coming out from the CDC, which of course then gets echoed across all the legacy news outlets, is just to go out and get the vaccine, get the booster, wear the mask, and that's it. Really makes you wonder what's happening behind the scenes driving these sorts of messaging decisions. Regardless though, over the past several years, there have been warning signs indicating that things are actually getting worse. Perhaps because of the mainstream media's push to normalize obesity, or perhaps because of the problems generally attributed to the pandemic, whatever the cause, there have been signals popping up in many different places across the nation indicating that obesity is on the rise. For instance, when researchers looked at the body weight trends within the U.S. Army, they found that about 10,000 soldiers slipped into obesity during the pandemic. Likewise, there was a separate study published two years ago which reported finding that obesity rates in children were skyrocketing during the period of the pandemic with kids quite literally doubling their body mass index rates. Here was what that earlier study found. Quote, the COVID-19 pandemic led to school closures, disrupted routines, increased stress, and less opportunity for physical activity and proper nutrition, leading to weight gain among children and adolescents. Among a cohort of 432,302 persons aged 2 to 19 years, the rate of body mass index increase approximately doubled during the pandemic compared to a pre-pandemic period. Meaning, in practical terms, because of the response to the pandemic, not the pandemic itself, but rather the government's response to the pandemic, American children are now more obese than ever, with their BMI just going off the charts. But again, this study was from September of 2021, literally two years ago. And you would hope that since all of the pandemic-related restrictions have now been lifted, in fact, they've been lifted for a while now, things have gotten better. However, that does not appear to be the case. You fast forward to the present, and exactly one week ago, the CDC released updated data showing a new surge in the rates of obesity across the U.S. Now, just so we're all on the same page, in terms of definitions, up on your screen is the official body mass index chart. This chart, it correlates your height to your weight, and based on that, it assigns you a BMI number, a body mass index number. And so, for instance, if you are 5'9", and you weigh 162 pounds, you have a body mass index of 24 and you are considered to be in a healthy weight for your height. However, if you are 5'9", and you weigh 209 pounds, well, then your BMI score is 31, and you're considered obese. Now, this method isn't perfect. For instance, if you lift weights and you have a lot of muscle, then you might have a BMI score that looks high on paper, but in reality, you're fine. You just have a lot more muscle rather than a lot more fat. Regardless, though, outside the case of bodybuilders, this BMI calculator is a pretty good tool to track whether people are a healthy weight or not. And here is how the BMI scores generally break down. Anything under 19 is considered underweight. 19 to 24 is considered a healthy weight. 25 to 29 is considered overweight. 30 to 35 is considered obese. And anything over 35 is considered severely obese. And according to this new data, which came from the CDC's Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, the number of Americans falling into the obese category is surging. As you can see from the map up on your screen, which was included in this data sheet, every state in the nation has an obesity rate that's at least 20%. Furthermore, only five states, the ones that are marked in yellow, have obesity rates that are below 30%. The rest of the country, 
that's marked in orange, red, and dark red, they have obesity rates going from 30% all the way up to 50%, with the states of Oklahoma, Louisiana, and West Virginia being the most overweight in the nation. And here are a few of the top line takeaways from this data. Quote, all states and territories had an obesity prevalence higher than 20%, more than one in five adults. Then in terms of regions, you had, quote, the Midwest, 35.8%, and South, 35.6%, had the highest prevalence of obesity, followed by the Northeast with 30.5%, and the West, 29.5%. Overall, when you add it all up, 115 million people in America are classified as being obese, which includes 42% of all adults and about 20% of all children. That's, by the way, 115 million people who are obese, not overweight, but actually obese with a BMI of over 30. And what's really troubling, besides the numbers themselves, is the trend that this represents. Because back in the year 2021, the data showed that 19 U.S. states had obesity levels above 35%. However, this latest data, which is from 2022, shows that that number has creeped up to 22 states. And then also, if we go back and look at the map through time, starting with the late 80s, you can see the trend is just unmistakable. The highest level of obesity in the late 80s is now the lowest level today. Furthermore, the CDC's data, it segmented these BMI numbers by race, and what they found was that here in America, Asians were the least likely to be obese, followed by white people, then Hispanic adults, American Indians, and then lastly, black adults. And these numbers are truly worrying to the tens of millions of Americans who find themselves in this position, because even outside of the COVID risk that we mentioned earlier, Here's what the CDC wrote as a part of their warning to America. Quote, adults with obesity are at increased risk for many other serious health conditions, including heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, some cancers, severe outcomes from COVID-19, and poor mental health. Additionally, people with obesity report being stigmatized because of their weight. But these numbers get even wilder, which we'll get into right after I introduce the sponsor of today's episode by showing you this little piece of money. Or rather, I should say that this is fake money being printed into oblivion by those geniuses over in Washington, D.C. And so before they completely obliterate your life savings, what I recommend you do is to convert that fake money into real money, which is physical gold and silver. And the best company to use is the sponsor of today's episode, American Hartford Gold who also happens to be my own personal gold and silver bullion dealer. They have thousands of other five-star ratings across the country. They have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. They ship quickly, directly to your doorstep. Their product listings are awesome. They're stacked with great options of gold and silver bullion and coins, and they have amazing customer service. When you pick up the phone and call them, you feel good knowing you support a company that supports the truth getting out into the wider American audience. And so calling them up is a no-brainer. But best of all, if you tell them that Roman sent you, they will throw in up to $5,000 worth of free silver with your first purchase. It's 866-242-2352, or you can simply text the word Roman, R-O-M-A-N, Roman, to 65532. Of course, all their details will be down in the description box below. And now, let's head back to the studio. Furthermore, alongside these numbers, the CDC recently published an analysis of death certificates, and it shows that obesity as a factor in cardiac deaths has tripled over the past two decades. Specifically, over the past 20 years, the cardiac death rate that's linked to obesity has tripled from 2.2 deaths per 100,000 to 6.6 deaths per 100,000. And this change becomes even wilder when you consider that this increase in obesity-related cardiac deaths happened at the very same time that you saw an actual decline in heart disease overall. And so what this means is that during the same 20-year period of time, you had overall deaths from heart disease down 18%, while obesity-related heart disease was up by 20%, which is exactly the fact that led the CDC to write this as a part of their warning. Quote, our updated maps sent a clear message that additional support for obesity prevention and treatment is an urgent priority. Obesity is a disease caused by many factors, including eating patterns, physical activity levels, sleep routines, genetics, and certain medications. Although this really makes you wonder, if over the past three years, the federal government, instead of spending $30 billion on vaccines, and then probably another at least $30 billion on marketing the vaccines. If instead, the government somehow used those funds and that general publicity to tackle the problem of rising obesity, would we have had a better effect at preventing COVID-related hospitalizations and deaths, especially given the statistics? If they went on air every single day, day after day, telling people to lose weight, exercise, eat healthier, maybe plant a local garden, day in and day out for three years, what would this world look like? I'm sure many people would have accepted it, given the fact that the vaccine uptake, which they did promote for three years, is well over 80% in this country. If they instead promoted things to reduce obesity, 
You can only wonder what that trend would actually look like, but for some odd reason, that's not what happened. And so while for the past three years, they called it a pandemic of the unvaccinated, looking deeper into these numbers, well, there's a real case to be made for calling it a pandemic of the overweight. But of course, there is a lot less profit to be made in sustainable weight loss. If you'd like to read any of the studies and documents that we went through in today's episode, I'll throw all those links down into the description box below this video for you to check out and comb through at your own leisure. And then lastly, as I mentioned at the very, very top of the, today's episode, after a years long investigation, we finally published our awesome documentary called No Farmers, No Food, Will You Eat the Bugs? Here's a trailer. <laughs> Food prices are skyrocketing around the world. And if you listen to world leaders, they'll tell you it's due to climate change. Climate change is the biggest threat for the human beings. And their solution might surprise you. There are 1,900 edible insect species on the planet. The European Commission has officially declared mealworms to be food. Yes, this is true to a food. The people in charge have determined that by switching our diet to crickets, ants, and mealworms, we'll be able to stop temperatures from rising, lower the price of food, and possibly to even save the planet. It's never about innovation. It's always about getting rid of farmers. Agenda 21 was meant to be the agenda for the 21st century. Some of the goals sound nice, ending hunger. Who could possibly be against ending hunger? It requires total power from the state. I think it's a scam. A lot of this came about in the early 70s, the Clean Water Act, Clean Air Act, which were good things, but it's been abused from what the original tent is. No, maybe we're not just farm, farm anymore. No, there's also not a farm anymore. So all these people shut down because of the government policies? Yeah. I'm the sixth generation of farmer. Yeah, I'm the fourth generation. How many years have they on this plot of land? 40 years. I think we're the last generation. They're shutting down the small and middle-sized family-run farms. We need their own property or we are property. I don't think you can trust the government anymore because they want the land. And our founding fathers understood that the land would be distributed among the people so they could always control their government. Right now, things have uh, tripled as far as cost. I think you're going to see across the board higher food prices. Has anybody been held accountable for screwing up? No. As every common tyrant of the last hundred years has understood, if you control the food, you control the people. Everything is falling apart. I've got to show the shortage of food. We're heading for a world food crisis, as we hear all the time. We see any hope for the situation. No, we have to continue fighting for it. No farmers, no food. They will know it. If you'd like to check out that awesome documentary in its glorious entirety, well, you can check it out over on Epic TV, our awesome no censorship video platform. I'll throw a link. It'll be right there at the top of the description box below. You can click on that link and head on over to Epic TV and watch the documentary right away. I hope you check it out because, again, it took us a year. We went very, very deep into the subject. And in it, we really tried to map out how Agenda 21 and the 15-year plan that we're currently in, Agenda 2030, manifest as concrete policies in countries around the world. Because what typically happens is that Americans, once a year, they look on Twitter and they see the World Economic Forum, they see the UN, they just see compilations of those meetings. They see the global elites talking about putting microchips in our heads and using our credit card to track our carbon points, things like that. They look at that and they go, well, that's pretty crazy. And then they go about their lives. But the fact is that that is just what, one small part of what's seen. The real work happens behind the scenes. The real work is being done by coalitions and groups and different treatises and organizations that actually are on the ground at the local level, at the water boards, at the state legislatures, here in America and around the world, actually implementing these policies in concrete ways. They use either the laws that are on the books or the specific situations in those countries to get things done. And this is all being done while most people don't even realize it's being done. And what we're trying to do with the documentary is to equip people with the facts, the knowledge, the nuanced take on things, and kind of a broader understanding so that when you hear a politician speak or you hear a news report, especially when young people hear a politician speak and they hear a news report, they, they go, oh, you know what? I know what's happening here. I know what the politician is not mentioning. I know what's happening behind the scenes. I know very likely where this policy leads to. And even though it sounds good on the surface, I know that this actually leads potentially to a famine because that's not what's being discussed, only the niceties of saving the planet, having clean air, having clean water, that's only what's being discussed. It's sort of surface level manifestations, but underneath, well, it's, uh, it's, not, so, it's not so green. It's a little bit more red than green.
And so if you'd like to check out that awesome documentary again, the link will be right there at the top of the description box below. I hope you check it out. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed. Most importantly, stay free. Thank <laughs> you.